Hi guys and welcome to the Shrewsbury vs Sunderland match preview. So Sunderland do go away from home on Tuesday against Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury you are currently 21st in the league. Now for me that doesn't 100% tell the story of Shrewsbury season so far because if you look at those or their results on paper you know it's not like they're getting battered week in week out. They're really really not even though if you look at the league table it does say, you know, they've played 17, won 4, drew 3, and they've lost a whopping 10, which doesn't make for great reading. But again, if you look at their results, I don't think only once this, this season have they conceded over two goals. So like I say, it's not like they're getting battered. They're not losing 3-4-0 every week. I think they lost 3-0 once, really early on in the season. Then every other game, it's sort of one all, 2 ones, one nils. You know, they're really, really tight games. You know, they don't concede too much, but they don't score enough either which is obviously their issue as well if you look last time out they did take on Cheltenham away from home they went a goal up early doors and then they went and conceded a penalty and got the red card in the process to make it one all for Cheltenham and Cheltenham got away eventually with a 2-1 win prior to that they lost 2-0 in the Cup to Wigan, and before that they did score five away from home against Stratford in the FA Cup, and it's 1-0 against Lincoln, you know, it's a really good result. They beat Cambridge 4-1, brilliant result. 2-0 away, uh, away from home against Oxford where they did lose. They beat MK Dons 1-0, they lost to Ipswich 2-1, so as you can see, there's a bit of a pattern. The really, really tight games, you know, prior to that they, they lost to Bolton 2-1, and before that they lost 2-1 to Wickham. So they're really in games, you know what I mean? So I think for them it's just a case of they need that little bit of luck of the draw, but will it come against us? Hopefully not. You know, I'm expecting a hard-working, physical side in Shrewsbury, and it's not going to be an easy game, as you can see, with, with previous results, even at some of the, the better sides in this league, they're really competing, and it, that sounds like I'm being patronising towards them, but, you know, those kind of results, they can easily sway either way. It just hasn't gone in uh, in their in their way, has it? It just hasn't fell, um, it hasn't fell nicely for them, hasn't fell kindly for them. So, yeah, I'm, I'm expecting a difficult test. Now, Sunderland, of course, they've... Managed to sort of turn the tide somewhat after a really poor few weeks. You know, we went, I think, six, seven games without a win or whatever it was in the league anyway. Um, we, you know, we picked up some absolute batterings, which I'm not going to dwell on too much because we've managed to turn it around, like I say, somewhat against Ipswich. But, you know, I don't want to get ourselves, you know, carried away. We beat a very, very good Ipswich side, which is an excellent, excellent result on paper. And, of course, it's a results game and that's all we do mainly care about. But you want to see a performance as well. And if we're com being completely honest... We didn't look particularly good um, for the most part against Ipswich. We got away with 2 0 wins, which, which again, I'm not complaining about. But, you know, I, sometimes a result on paper can. Uh it, it can dress a situation or a performance up or a game up to be something and it's not when it, when Ipswich could have easily been outside I think um, it had come half time but they just weren't and it was our you know, look that was in our favour that night or that day should I say against Ipswich but you know again it's a confidence booster I think it would have done the world of good mentally for the lads you know despite whatever kind of performance we give out you know they would have known full well what a difficult task it would have been to take an Ipswich one of the favourites to win the league and to beat them 2 0, you know, at home in front of the crowd, it will have done them the world of good. So, hopefully, now we can get another good performance, or sorry, get a good performance on top of a good result as well against Shrewsbury. So, like I say, not going to be an easy game. And I will give you my preferred 11. But firstly, of course, we have had a little bit of injury news, which has just made it such a nightmare to make this 11 up, really. You know, with Sirkin, he's apparently out with a hernia issue. Uh, until January, of course Hume is out until January, You've got Huggins who's out until the, the new year as well, so we've got two left backs, well we don't have any left backs left, we have no full backs essentially, uh, fit until the new year, which it's just it's, it happens every year doesn't it, we had Luke O'Neill playing centre back and right back all for the last couple of seasons, we just don't seem to have luck with injuries at all, so uh, we're going to have a back line made up of 50% midfielders I'm sure, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll go into my preferred 11, trying to accommodate these injuries. So I've been umming and ahhing about this 11, but it's kind of more of a preferred slash predicted 11 this time, because in goal, I'm definitely going to go for Hoffman. He kind of, uh, he got, of course, he got that clean sheet. I'm not going to change that. Bailey Wright and Doyle in the middle of defence. You know, it, when you get a clean sheet after the poor amount of goals we've been conceding in recent times, you get a clean sheet against Ipswich. I don't really fancy changing Bailey Wright and Doyle around now. There's no point. Keep that in there. Keep that call there. Luke Hornan, I put a left back because 
who the hell else is going to go there? Now, at right back, again, for me, I would generally prefer Alves just to be tried out there and stick Winchester in the middle alongside Dan Neal. That is what I want to see, but I know it's not going to happen, so I just thought, what's the point? I'll stick Winchester there. Now, in argument to that, you know, I've seen a lot of people um, comment or recently, someone commented, so, you know, oh, Winchester's played really well there. I don't know why you want to change them. I, I get that. Winchester has done decent there this season so far, particularly early stage of the season. He was fantastic. But for me, I just feel like it, we've got such a wasted talent there sitting at right back. And when you've got a natural defender in Alves, who, you know, I don't massively, you know, I don't rate him hugely. You know, granted we haven't seen too much of him, but he hasn't massively impressed me when you have. But when you've got a natural defender on the bench and you've got Winchester, who for me is probably our second best central midfielder behind Dan Neal, you know, playing at right back, it just feels so, so wasted. But I've only stuck him there because I know that He's probably going to be there come Tuesday. So it'll be Winchester at right back. Now in the middle, Evans and Daniel. Daniel, for me, of course, it goes without saying, done it, is our best central midfielder. Evans, if it was up to me, he wouldn't be anywhere near the side because I really, really don't rate the lad. I'm not hating on him. You know, he's, he's grafted a decent career for himself. But, you know, it's, it just doesn't really offer up much for me. He kind of just drifts around. He, there's no really leadership ability there. Then when he gets in the ball, it's either backwards or he tries these sprayed passes that go immediately to the opposition. And he just gives the ball away. It's just a bit of a, a passenger, which sounds a lot like a certain Mr. Max Power that I've spoke about so many times. So, uh, for me, you know, I would put Winchester in there and put Alves at right back. But it's, it's not going to happen, is it? But uh, yeah, I just hope to God that Dan Neal doesn't find himself at left back because um, I feel like that would be even more of a wasted talent. So hopefully that is the way it goes with Dan Neal in the middle. Now up top, this was a really difficult for me, this, because against Ipswich we started off with a 4-4-2 and even though the press for the opening five, six, seven minutes was okay um, and, and we looked relatively threatening going forward, but then our confidence started to sort of drop a little bit then we started to sit deeper and then there was a huge gap between midfield and the final third where Broadhead and Stuart found themselves you know, sort of isolated because the gap was so big. Dan Neal and Evans were dropping deeper, the wingers were dropping deeper and it made it pointless and they were overrunning us in midfield and then that's when we changed it to a 4-2-3-1. You know, we had Embleton coming inside and Broadhead dropping out to the left with Stuart up top. So it, it gives a little bit more uh, room to manoeuvre. So if I was to go for a 4-2-3-1, you know, I might stick Embo in there in place of McGeady and then stick out Broadhead on the left-hand side. But I just like to, I really wanted to keep seeing and keep trying Broadhead and Stuart up top. Now, I've gone with McGeady uh, just because I thought when he did come on, he did somewhat change the game. Uh, in the Ipswich game, you know, of course he stretched the play a little bit more because we were getting a bit narrow. He stretched the play and of course he got the goal, which, yeah, it was a penalty, but it'll do him the world of good. I know he's still suffering uh, from from an injury, so he probably will find himself in the bench and Embleton will probably start. Pritchard has a shout in there, he looked quite lively when he came on as well. For me, the only reason I've got Gooch on the, on the, on the wing as well is that little bit of... Uh, pace as well as that physicality although for me Lyndon Gooch he does not do Winchester any favours because don't get me wrong he does track back and he does defend but his awareness defensively is absolutely god awful he chases the wrong men off the ball which gives Winchester a nightmare of a time sometimes Winchester's two on one because Gooch has got dragged inside and his attention he gets dragged inside rather than sticking out with the wingers and you know like I say you end up with Winchester getting doubled up on but because he does actually attend to those defensive duties, I would like to see Gooch there, particularly away from him against a physical side. That's why I've gone with Gooch. And that would be my sort of preferred slash predicted starting eleven. you know. If we do go for 4-2-3-1, I would have Embleton in there in place of McGeady. Stick Embleton uh, behind the strikers or behind the striker with a broadhead out wide. But um, yeah, that is what I'm going to go for. And of course, in the comments, you let me know who you would be starting on Tuesday. But now for my... Score prediction, I'm going to go for a very, very tight game. I think it's going to be a tight game, but I am going to go for another Sunderland win. I'm going to go for a 1-0 win, and I think Broadhead will be getting it. As I say, you know, Shrewsbury, I'm going to pay them no disrespect at all, because, like I say, when you look at their results, and of course you can't tell all performances um, just purely off results and score lines, but they're so tight. It's all 1-0s, 1-1s, 2-1s. They've only been battered the once 3 0 earlier on in the season, but everything, everything just seems so tight for them. And I think the tide can turn. And you know, when teams are having a bit of a bad run or even in a bit of a rut, it always seems to be against Sunderland where something could go wrong. So I am going to back the lads uh, for the win, but it's going to be close. I'm going to go for a Sunderland 1 0 win. Now, you guys let me know in the comments what you think the score is going to be as well. But that'll be it, guys. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit the like button for me. It'd be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully-fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, you take care and stay jammed.